A well-known parking lot here on campus just got a huge facelift and one campus official was excited to show it off. Coming up, MCTV's Grace Bean has all the details from yesterday's party in the R07 parking lot. Spring commencement is just around the corner and some students are counting down the days until they walk across the stage. But before heading out into the real world, we'll show you how the university gave students one last chance to take a next step towards their future careers. And members of Texas Tech's track and field team are about to do something previous Red Raiders haven't done before as they head into the last half of their regular season competition. MCTV's Nathan Bowles has details on the upcoming weekend meets along with a look around Tech Athletics in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Aaron Pillay. And I'm Melissa Fant. For decades, the R07 parking lot between the administration building and the sub has been a popular spot for faculty, staff, students, and visitors looking for an easy place to access the horror of campus. But a few years ago, a plan was put into place to dramatically change the look and feel and function of the lot to make it more than just a place to park. And as MCTV's Grace Bean shows us, that design is now officially a reality. On the morning of April 13th, the parking lot that's usually filled with cars was instead filled with students, alumni, and professors alike, all celebrating thanks to President Chauvinick's presidential pedestrian mall event. We always wanted to do something with the administrative parking lot, and um, we wanted to tie it in with the rest of campus, and I think we've done that. Students planning to pay for lunch instead were treated to free burgers, hot dogs, lemonade, and chips, and were given the chance to meet other tech community members. Had some fun conversations with strangers in line that like, I wouldn't have had if there wasn't an event like this. Along with eating free food handed out by the president himself, students could also meet the masked writer, Raider Red, and get themselves a snow cone from Bahama Books. The mall also allowed for students and alumni to come to the center of campus and experience the beauty of Texas Tech as one community before many students go home for the weekend for Easter. This was something I was really obsessed with because <laughs> I, I, I felt our campus was so beautiful and this detracted from that. And so this is a way just to kind of celebrate this. Though the event may have been held for bringing students together, President Chauvinick also discusses the celebrated parking lot is also a hope for increased safety on campus. Blind scooters and buses don't always go well together. So uh, that was, it began with a safety consideration and we thought, why not make it look better? Needless to say, this mall gave students some good memories and good food to go along with them. For MCTV, this is Grace Bean. Final construction on the pedestrian mall was completed earlier this spring. The new design includes a renovation of the courtyard on the south side of the administration building where the double T bench is located. Along with the construction of the concrete and brick pathway that cut the lot in half, the project also included the removal of the portion of 15th Street that crossed in front of the sub, which was one of the busiest bus stops on campus. West access to the 15th Street was also removed, but the R07 lot can still be entered by using Boston or Akron Avenues. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Over the last two weeks, several campus groups have been hosting a series of events to help bring attention to the issue with hopes of reducing or eliminating incidents here at Texas Tech. Since the beginning of the semester alone, there have been seven reported cases of sexual assault and four reports of forcible fondling on campus. Out of these 11 incidents, 10 of them were on on-campus residence halls. University officials encourage everyone to report any incident of harassment or sexual assault to the Office for Student Civil Rights and Sexual Misconduct. To report an incident, you can visit title9.ttu.edu, click on the reporting tab. Texas Tech also reminds students to make sure locks are working and avoid leaving doors open or unlocked. You should also confirm that the person at the door is someone you know before opening it. For more information on campus resources available to help keep the Texas Tech community safe, visit raidersafety.ttu.edu. In just under four weeks, the spring semester will come to an end and many graduates will head into the working world. With that in mind, one campus group held a semi-annual event to give students a chance to meet up with potential employers. Yesterday, the University Career Center hosted the Spring All Majors Job Fair. The biannual event is an opportunity for students to meet with employers, shake hands, and get an idea of what life could look like after graduation. The fair allows students to make connections that help prepare them for, the, for their futures. 
Austin Barron from Goosehead Insurance says that a majority of their employees are tech students, and the fair is one of their best recruiting opportunities. Number one thing I'd say to students coming to a career fair is we want to hire you. Come here, give us a reason, and be very open-minded and, and just learn more. If you are able to make it to the spring all-majors job fair, the UCC offers dozens of in-person and online opportunities to help students find employment. For more information on future fairs, visit careercenter.ttu.edu and click on the Events tab. Over the last two days, the South Plains area has experienced wind gusts between 30 and 60 miles per hour. Not only did that cause another round of dust storms, but wildfires threatened several communities here in the Lubbock area. Luckily, all of the fires have been extinguished, but the ongoing dry conditions are keeping the fire danger high. So will the wind still be a factor as we head into Easter weekend? Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. Lots of sunshine and bright blue skies are clearly visible on the MCTV tower cam today. That's a nice change from the brown that covered the atmosphere over the last two days. Winds are still breezy today, but speeds are staying at or below 20 miles an hour. Temperatures are also continuing to rise after starting out in the 30s or early this morning. We should reach the low 80s before sunset this evening. Later tonight, temperatures will cool down, but it will be a lot warmer than last night. Lows should only drop into the mid-50s with winds hovering between 10 and 20 miles an hour. Tomorrow, we'll see even warmer temperatures with highs expected to cross the 90 degree mark. Unfortunately, the winds will also be a bit more breezy with wind speeds up to 25 miles an hour. We probably won't see any dust storms tomorrow, but the higher speeds may mean an increase in fire risk. For the most part, wind speeds should stay between 10 and 15 miles an hour over the next few days, which is dramatically better than the conditions we saw earlier this week. High wind gusts are not currently in the forecast for next week, but there's also little to no chance of rain in the near future. Other than the dry conditions, Easter weekend should include a couple of days of nice spring weather here in the Hub City. We will see a slight cool down early on Saturday, but temperatures are expected to be mild in the afternoon. And on Easter Sunday, conditions will be close to perfect with sunny skies and light breeze and temperatures climbing into the mid-80s in the afternoon. If you're planning on any activities on Easter, it looks like the wind won't be much of an issue throughout the day and temperatures will stay warm into the evening. Looking ahead, another cool down and cloudy conditions are forecast to start the week followed by another round of near 90 degree weather by midweek. The Texas Tech baseball team held on to a top five national ranking after a Big 12 sweep last weekend. They headed a couple hours north for a special midseason showdown with a familiar opponent. MCTV's Nathan Bulls joins us now with a wrap up of one of Tech's baseball's most unique contestants on the calendar, along with look, looking at two teams who are also getting national attention in sports. Nathan? Thanks, Alyssa and Aaron. Texas Tech baseball is fourth in the country, and they went to Amarillo to test that against Oklahoma. We'll pick up the Hodgetown game in the top of the or the bottom of the second, where Owen Washburn hit a two-run home run to put Texas Tech up two to nothing early. But Oklahoma started to get the bats going. In the top of the fifth, Brett Squires hit his second home run of the game. He ended up finishing with four with five hits and four runs batted in. Oklahoma was up six to two at this point. Texas Tech got back into it, but in the top of the eighth, Oklahoma up 12 to nine. Jimmy Crooks hit a two run homer to extend Oklahoma's lead and Oklahoma won the game 14 to nine. It is the most runs Tech has allowed in a single game this season. It was not a conference loss, even though it was against a big 12 opponent. Tech's next conference series is this weekend against TCU in Fort Worth. Because Easter is this Sunday, the series will start tonight at six and run through Saturday. All games are on ESPN+. Vivian Gray was not selected in the WNBA draft Monday, but on Tuesday she signed a free agent deal with the Phoenix Mercury. Tech said she will attend training camp with the Mercury next week. Gray is a four-time All-American and just the fourth player ever to be a four-time All-Big 12 first team selection. The last two years were spent at Texas Tech after she decided to transfer from Oklahoma State. Last season, Gray led the team in scoring as she averaged over 20 points a game, along with five rebounds, two, two steals, and a block. 
Texas Tech track and field is split between the Mount Sac Relays and the Tom Jones Memorial in Florida this week. Coach Wes Kidley said he's never brought a team to Gainesville, Florida for a tournament, and the Tom Jones Memorial is one of the toughest events in the country. I wanted to put us, before we hit that gauntlet of Big 12, regionals, and nationals, I wanted to have one big time that we kind of test and see where we are. In the latest track and field polls, both the men's and women's track teams were ranked seventh. The Tom Jones Memorial will be held Friday and Saturday. Tech softball had three tough losses against number one Oklahoma last weekend. They will try to get back to winning against Iowa State on the road this weekend. The series starts at 4 p.m. today and finishes on Saturday. All three games are on ESPN+. And lastly, Texas Tech men's and women's tennis are finishing their regular seasons Saturday. The women will go to Fort Worth to play TCU. The men are home at the McLeod Tennis Center, but they have to play number four Baylor starting at five. That's all for sports. Back to you, Alyssa and Aaron. Thanks, Nathan. As we mentioned earlier, the spring semester is nearing an end, and many students are starting to focus on their future career as they leave Texas Tech. Even though a formal interview is an important part of the process in getting a first job, students were recently given a chance to practice some skills that may have a big influence on their post-graduation career. On Tuesday, the University Career Center hosted a mocktail party. The event was a unique way for students to learn certain types of etiquette skills from a professional etiquette coach. Attendees then had a chance to practice those skills and receive feedback at the end of the night. The Career Center hopes the mocktail party will help students feel more comfortable talking to employers in formal environments. When we go through anything with practice, we grow in confidence. And um, it's always good to have some knowledge before you go into a situation of how it's going to go. Harding says the experience helps students learn skills that they may take for granted, such as holding food in one hand and shaking an employer's hand with the other. So, Warren, have you ever attended one of the Career Center's mocktail parties? So, I haven't, but I graduate this December, so I'll definitely be on the lookout for oh, one. Oh, I'll be ready to graduate next yeah, year. It goes by fast. Well, that's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.